our discussion today will focus on the primal zones in which the psyche operates. We usually talk about a state, a state of chaos, a state of disintegration, a paranoid schizoid state, a depressive position. We talk of these states, but if we look into it more microscopically, we see that the paranoid schizoid state is not one state, but rather a zone in which a variety of paranoid schizoid positions can be taken. From mild to moderate to severe, from ordinary to creative to pathological. Paranoid schizoid position, one goes into naturally in psychosis versus Paranoid schizoid position into which one goes under severe stress. Similarly, there is a discussion in Freud, not agreed to by a client, of the state of primary narcissism, which also is a zone in which various states operate. So, I am one of those who agree with Freud that there is a state of primary narcissism, if not a stage. I personally believe the state is very close to a stage and is associated to the first stage after birth. But even if we don't argue it out to that point to say that the state exists if not the stage is a very safe thing to say. The state of primary narcissism and obviously there is not one state but a variety of states that different people experience all of which are states of primary narcissism and therefore there is this zone of primary narcissism. Similarly there is a state of normalcy or rather a zone of normalcy into which you and I operate most of the times. And of course, that is what we say a normal state of mind is not one state, but a zone, a variety of states that we call as normal. So in the normal state, one can be in an intellectually active state, creatively active state, devotionally active state. One can be in uh, just a state of doing nothing in particular a variety of states that we call normal states. So there are various kinds of states and of course each of these states that we refer to loosely actually is one particular state in a zone of its kind. And this is what we want to enumerate today. What are the primal generic zones in which the psyche moves? And can we list them out from the most pathological to the most healthy, which can also give us a light of development and which can also tell us how two or more states one can be going through at any part of his life and we don't end up confusing the supernormal with the subnormal. So let us take a look at the zones. We move from 1 to 12, from the lowest to the highest in one sense. There can be aspects of each state which are better than certain aspects of the subsequent stage. But on an average, this is the line of higher and better states. This is the line of development from 1 to 12. 1 being the lowest, 12 being the highest. And of course, one doesn't move sequentially like this. There is a collage, a cocktail of zones one passes through 
based upon one's individual journey. So the first state is a state of catatonic time, where the pathology is so high that any contact with reality inside or outside is completely prohibited. It's like a black hole from which the thing can escape. The pathology is like the gravity of a black hole from which no thought, no feeling, no action can escape. So this is the one of the most pathological state. And we see the causation by death instinct, narcissistic rage, envy, anxiety, catastrophic anxiety of infinite pain. and narcissistic rage, all of that being at work to cause the catatonic part. And there is also, a, from a karmic standpoint, there is a very strong karmic component here. But even if you don't believe in it, from a secular psychoanalytic standpoint, this is still one of the most pathological states. The second stage is of primary narcissism and that zone is the zone of reverie and blissful states. All the states of primary narcissism, a variety of states, all of primary narcissism. But if we deconstruct primary narcissism, it is states of reverie and blissfulness with an undertone of omnipotence being lived out self-sufficiency being lived out. And this is a state where slow moving fantasies of the very pleasant type are going on, very slow moving thoughts are going on and there is blissfulness. And this state of primary narcissism alternates with a state of chaos or the state of the innate. So the state of the chaos is where the ego has separated from the id and there is chaos, a complete chaos inside. And this chaotic state alternates with the state of reverie and blissfulness. In the duration of the first part of life, which Freud calls as primary narcissism, and the Kleiners don't believe there is an object-free state of primary narcissism, but Dispute aside, the first part of life, we do have the zones of reverie and blissfulness alternating with the zones of chaos. The zone of inane, where you cannot understand what is going on. But you still have some structuring of the state, much better than the state of chaos. Here, the state of chaos is frozen into some structure which still cannot be understood. The thinking process is still not lucid, but it is a state of the innate, a structured state, not a chaotic state, a structured state. And then, but you still can't have a lucid psychological cognitive function. Then we have the state of split where the evaluation function has started operating. The psychic activity has started functioning in a primitive way and you have the extreme thinking of good and bad but not the continuum in between. You can think on the two poles of the continuum. You cannot think of integrating the two poles in the middle of the continuum. So that is the state of the split and which extreme good and extreme bad alternate in terms of experiences, which is more lively and better than the state of chaos or the state of the inane. <clears throat> mm. 
But in the good thing about the chaos and inane compared to the reverie and blissful state is the ego is to slowly dealing with non-omnipotence of itself. That is the good part about these states. That you are coming out of a gestalt kind of matrix into an individual constellation. After the split, worse than the split or slightly better than the split in one sense, not worse in the split always, uh, you will always have the worst of four will be better than the best of five. That can always happen. Similarly, the worst of five, the Best of five can be better than the worst of six. That always will be there. So there are, this is not a clear linear categorization, ranking rather. So then we have the split zones and then the disintegration zones. Now, if the disintegration is mild, it is better than the split. But if the disintegration is severe, then split is better than a disintegration. But this definitely is one category of a zone into which the psyche moves. Between split and disintegration, there is a slight difficulty because if the disintegration is mild, it is better than a split. If the disintegration becomes moderate, it becomes a partial split, if it becomes severe, it becomes like the split and if it becomes too high, it becomes worse than the split. It goes into a chaos kind of condition, goes to three. So disintegration can be of various types, but on an average, it is better than the split. And if we see in everyday life, disintegration is very much a part as is the split. But disintegration is far more common. And as usual, it is mild. So I kept it after the split as a more healthy situation than a split. So when I say disintegration is more healthy, it is usually the mild and mild to moderate. And mostly the mild, which is the basis of ranking disintegration over the split. Then we have the ordinary state into which you and I mostly live. And of course, this is a zone. Uh, you pass through states which are intellectually driven, biologically driven, artistically driven, spiritually driven. So this also is a zone. And then above the ordinary, you have the depressive position. In ordinary states, very few people actually have the essence of the depressive position of thinking out in the gray in an optimum way. It's a misnomer that ordinarily we live in depressive position. In fact, ordinarily we live in a semi-split, semi-depressive position. Healthier than the depressive position is the position, the zone of positive split. This is something Kleinians have never thought about the positive aspect of split. There is a split about the split that the split is all negative and the depressive position is all positive. That is not true. The depressive position is an ordinary and above ordinary position. It is not the position of brilliance. The position of brilliance and genius comes only with the state of a positive split where the splitting is positively used for a higher purpose. It is a misnomer that split cannot be used for a higher purpose. In fact, all great works of all areas, they come from positive split. Then there is a zone of the parapsychological where what is not 
deemed possible with the human psychic apparatus, psychobiological apparatus becomes possible. And this is the zone which is more resourceful, more powerful zone than all the rational zones. Till nine, we have very secular zones. Now we go into the mystical part of it, the non-secular part of it. The parapsychological zones where one can know or one can be adept at issues like precognition, retrocognition, out of body experiences. And this parapsychological part is something which comes and goes. Very few actually understand or can control it completely. And higher than that is the mystical parts where you start understanding and using the mystical laws of nature in far more detailed way than a parapsychology person does. And there is some infusion of spirituality into your working. And then you have spiritual zones. The zone of enlightenment, the, all the zones of uh, the states of pre enlightenment that have been detailed out by Patanjali. I have detailed them out, I have talked about it in the, the commentary on the Yoga Sutras. So then you have all these spiritual states the state of no thought, the state of Nirvana, the state of Kaivalya, the state of Mahabhav, the state of oneness with universe, the states of when one feels one is undergoing a deep transformation, the states, deeper states of devotion, all these states are spiritual states. So all this, the 12 category of zones in which psychic the psyche moves. And in each zone, of course, there are uncountable states that you can go into with different variations in constitution and flavor. Essentially still of the same color. So, one moves from 1 to 12, increasing the proportion of the more developed in one's personality. But essentially, one has gone through all of it in different measures, which is true for every person, each of us. That each of us would have seeds of all the twelve, at times presence of all the twelve. Most of us would have gone through all these zones, consciously or unconscious, in less or more measure. And the last Four zones are something which psychoanalysis does not adequately address. Other areas like spirituality, mysticism, positive psychology, creativity, they address these parts, these zones. So there are many states in each of the zones. And why each of these zones gets created? Are there pathological causes, normal causes or supernormal causes? All the three causes can be at work in creation of each of these zones. And if we understand each of these zones, how they get created or what is most active as causal elements while we are in each of the zones, we can address those causal elements and help the person understand it, get out of it, or if necessary, deepen it, expand it. So this is a listing out, ranking out of primal generic zones in which the psyche moves. I'm sure it's a new concept, so you would have a lot of questions. Write to me at hvindia at gmail.com.
or we can separately discuss each, each of these zones in details when we take up how each of these zones make an appearance in pathology. So when we discuss any pathological case involving each of these zones, we can go in details of the zone, how it got created in that person, how we can analyze it using different schools, what to do about it, and how do we deploy psychoanalysis or holistic healing to address the symphony. 